friends, Miss Natalie here. Today I'm showing you how I took a sketch and created a character uh, with form and uh, value. Um, this little gesture guy I did on paper first, then created a new layer to do my black outline on top of that image from uh, from from paper so you can see I decided I wanted this little this dude to hold his like jester stick in his tail to show that he has a prehensile tail so I was able to cut and move the piece from um, from that layer that background layer and then I decided I needed more hand so I was able to copy and move and flip the other hand um, and uh, yeah, and then I put the other layer on top of it of the little jester dude and I made his jester dude thing. And since the hat was behind, I decided to change it, move it up. Um, and I was pretty happy with that. At that point, though, I realized I needed a sketch for the tail and I hadn't done one yet. So I. I created a new layer and did a layer sketch there and just kind of played around with it until I liked it. Um, inked it, then realized that, oops, I did it on the same layer as my sketch. So I have to go back to my ink layer and here I am back doing the outline. I call it an ink layer just because it's like a comic term, but it's basically my outline layer. After that, I start laying in color, and I'm doing that in the same layer where I did the outline, and I'm doing the mid-tones for all of the different colors in his outfit. I will regret doing that X, but I did it anyway. Um, yeah, all the hat, his little collar, little dude, the different uh, parts of his clothes. Um, and every once in a while I have to go back with the black and, and fix some lines because I, I didn't make them um, quite as connecty as they should. Um, and this at this point I actually created a new layer for his skin so I could kind of play around with it. Um, he This guy is a chameleon. The jester is a chameleon. Um, so I wanted him to have some regular chameleon colors. Um, but also be influenced by the colors of his outfit. And I'm using that awesome magic wand tool to choose on my first layer, my um, outline layer, um, what part I want to um, do the next layer in. Remember, you use the uh, magic wand, and then on the next layer, you click on the little A, and then it'll keep basically your drawing within the lines. So, yeah, so you can see I've got the different colors kind of merging together. And then I also have some like main colors of his face, which I decided would be this kind of green and blue. Um, and yeah, I've got most of the colors. I decided to make his little cheek thingy uh, more of a green. Thought about doing the same with the eyes, didn't like it, made it more of a gray. Did the same thing with his nails um, and then use those same colors over on little guy over there. After this, the next thing I'm going to do is create a, another layer, so many layers, for my um, shadow and highlights. Basically what I'm going to do, create a new layer and um, oh, decide where the light's coming from. That's a biggie. And then I'm going to so select parts that I want um, on that, that original layer, paint layer one, I think it is. And then I'm going to start with, I actually started with like the lightest shade of shadow and then I added darker shades as I went. Um, and I used three different shadow shades and then I used um, two different highlight tints. Um, I use sh shade is a color plus black, a tint is a color plus white. So yeah. 
So I'm, and I went color by color. So I started with the maroon and I did the different parts of the maroon slash magenta, um, the different things one at a time because some things overlap other things. Um, and oh goodness, trying to get the fabric to look kind of like fabric, that was a challenge. Um, trying to put some value in the hands, in the body to make it look three-dimensional to give it some form that's what I'm doing but once I have all of the shadows in shadows on the tail um, I'm gonna take my main mid-tone color and then create a color for a highlight almost there right then I'm gonna lay in my highlights places where I think they should be on the hand on the hat on his hat not too many i didn't do as many highlights as i did shadows and sometimes i'm like yeah no too much just just a little just a little there um and a lot of times i laid it down and i would <laughs> not like it and pull it back the second the second color i worked on was the gr this teal green um Again, working with three different shadow colors, starting with the lightest of the shadows and then moving toward the darker, trying to be mindful of where my light is coming from, not always being terribly successful, but thinking, hey, where's the light coming from? Um, and trying to get those shadows in oh, with those little ruffles around his neck. It was kind of tricky. I had to kind of select them almost one at a time because there were some that they overlap each other. So just thinking about how are they overlapping? Where is the shadow coming from both his face and the other parts of the frill? That was tricky. Oop. And shadows on the tail and on <laughs> on lots of things. Um, maybe not quite as many shadows on some things. Let's see. Got to put shadows on little guy. His hat too. And little guy's frills. And of course shadows on the skin. Those are, those are coming pretty soon. So I've got his face and his hands. I'm trying to get some shadows in to give those very flat pieces some form a little shadow on his hands to maybe look like he might have some I don't know lines or something going on wasn't really sure what his hands were like if they were more human or more lizard or even maybe a little amphibian this is a character that is for a video game that um that someone I know is is planning and it was described to me but I'm doing a lot of like making stuff up as I go along here I go with the highlights putting some highlights here and there on the hat anything that I feel like would be out um, for the light to shine on so might be highlighted I don't know my idea of my light source, as I said, was kind of, well, it wasn't great. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. And hands and hat. And then I'm moving on to the blue. And now I'm going to be kind of moving through colors. Now I just really have the blue and the gold and the green of his face. So again, laying in the lightest, then going darker as I go moving around using that uh, magic wand to select the parts trying to get some um, feel to the fabric I guess it look actually like fabric and then putting in those highlights yeah trying to make them match from one part of the clothing to another, one part of his face to another was actually kind of tricky. Um, yeah, and a little shadow there. And moving on to the gold. 
which was actually a lot of fun. And I realized these are supposed to be bells, and I didn't put in, like, the the holes that bells usually have. So these are going to be some different special kind of bell that doesn't have a hole. Or maybe there's something completely different. Who knows? Um, I was really trying to get a metallic look, and I feel like I kind of succeeded. Um, maybe not completely but once i start putting in the highlights i feel like it looks much more metallic so i i actually like how it turned out and i think the color turned out great i really like the fact that i was able to put down a layer that was just the picture that i drew and therefore i was able to use my uh eyedropper tool to choose the color Oh, that would be a good video. How to use the eyedropper tool to choose a color. Maybe I'll do that. All right, now I'm going in with the green. And I decided with the green and the blue, there wasn't a whole lot of shadow. So I really started with the highlights and then brought a little bit of shadow in later. But mostly it's just highlights with that. All right. And... Oh, yeah. So this is the part where I decided I want his eyes to glow. So I, um, yeah, so I laid in a yellow and you'll see that happening soon. I also took a little break and did a little blending on this before I started working on the, the eyes. I didn't show you that. Okay, so everything's there and I'm going to put everything away but those eyes and then I'm going to add... Uh, a filter and a blur and a Gaussian blur. And now he's got glowing eyes. They, it's not totally obvious, but it's there's a little bit of glow there. And I like that. And the last thing I do is going to fill in the mouth. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I just erased the arrow. I did put a little background and put his name down. But that's my character. That's the jester. So... Now you can see how I did it. It's time for you to do yours. So do your ca character. Oh, I forgot. There's one last thing I did. And that's some shadow. Why did I forget? I put decide Because I almost didn't. I was almost like, I'm done. But I decided to put a little bit of shadow down just under his feet. So you could get the sense that he's standing on something. Yep. So that's what I did. I didn't like it. So I erased it. And, and that really is it. And then I added a little background color and his name. So you'll see that somewhere. And um, yep, that's my character. I can't wait to see yours.